can't argue with what they see right in front of their own face. I can understand why um, uh, people would have difficulty in understanding it because it does take a great deal of effort uh, uh, to make sense of it technically. Fernando Morris, an electrical engineer and computer specialist, is responsible for the most credible attempt to rebuild the Searle effect generator. We have something here that needs to be investigated, and really that's my role. I am a technical investigator of the SCG. In his home laboratory workshop near San Diego, California, Morris is following the footsteps of John Searle. Personally guided by Searle himself, he is rebuilding the generator precisely as Searle did long ago. Morris developed the unit that reveals a magnetic sine wave in the Searle generator. That's how I started off, is to try to build a magnetizer for it. And if I could de develop this sine wave, which I'd never heard of before, I think we're on to something and we could build upon that. Now that has been, that is proven, repeatable, and I've got the unit to do that. It's a process of magnetizing uh, the rollers and the plate. And when you develop sine waves on it, what you, in effect, you're developing a motor. And that's essential if it's going to be a viable device. That is exactly what I've been saying since 1946. There is a waveform in a magnetic domain on that metal. And the scientists say, impossible. Morris has invested his time and considerable personal fortune into this effort. After years of studying Searle's books, trying to decipher their meaning, and endless question and answer sessions with the man himself, what does he know that assures him Searle is right? I'm going to release a piece of information here that I've shared before, and that is the law of squares. That's one of those question marks right now, is how does that come about? It took me a while to understand it, but what it is, it represents time, space, and energy. And what it says, it's in a random state. That's not useful energy. But what John has done, he's tr he has transposed that matrix so that the output is uniform. And uh, within nature, uniformity means resonance. So if you can resonate that random energy, you got yourself an electric current because electrons are the only things that are free to move on metal. So what we got here is a converter of random energy into electrical current. And that's the brilliance behind the machine here is not only was John able to uh, decipher his matrix, but he was able to make it into a workable device. And that's the SEG. Morris's mock-up of the SEG needs an outside power source, just like Searle's original back in 1946. This unit does not contain the rare earth material and will not display the Searle effect. It was built to demonstrate Searle's contention that spinning magnets give off an electric charge as measured by the flashing LEDs. What will be the reaction if and when the Searle generator functions as the inventor assures it will? I think the public will demand to know why has this technology been ignored? Why have the experts failed to recognize it? John has a solution that is really the ultimate solution because it's, we're using energy that's already available in nature and it's benign. Uh, I think we have a wonderful opportunity here and uh, it's a shame it hasn't, it hasn't been uh, taken advantage of. I mean, John has been struggling to get this technology out for years.